Welcome to Hoss Brutality. My name is Stefan Zarnacki of Black Tie Tours. With me, as always, Wesley Jones of Tour Cascadia and local artist Cole Rogers. And uh, we are joined today by a native Texan, a sommelier, a gentleman and a scholar. His name is Charles Hessen. Charles, thank you so much for staying up staying out here later yeah <laughs> you know you should have been home by now probably Thank, yes uh, bless so bless you um <laughs> yeah, man, no kidding and uh and today we're at alexana winery where you work you're the hospitality director yes sir um at alexana and we have the privilege to record on this beautiful new deck mm. as there has been a major upgrade in the facilities here at alexana and we would love to hear a little more about that and awesome. actually, first, real quickly, what are we drinking? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, 2018 um, East Block Pinot Noir. Uh, East Block is about a third of our vineyard that is all volcanic soil. So this is all volcanic, about 12 barrels, less than 300 cases. And uh, young, but pretty approachable. Ooh. The 18s are, are uh, yeah, delicious. I think, approachable and age-worthy. I agree. That's not as wild and woolly as I was expecting. Oh, no. It's, no, no, it's no, no, no. Lush and Yeah, yummy. so thanks thanks for having us. We're um, sitting on our new, uh, newly constructed 2,800-square-foot covered deck. Hmm. Uh, this construction has been going on for a little <laughs> over a year. Yeah. And, you know, for many reasons, um, didn't happen as quickly as we had hoped. Uh, the original deck... Um, was covered, replaced, and now we have fans. Um, eventually, we'll have heaters in the ceiling, and we have a beautiful inside space that has been added to our original uh, tasting room. There's one big room that could accommodate 30 to 40 people mm. without social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> Two or, otherwise, yeah. uh, it's really beautiful. There's um, glass walls that disappear um, that can turn that one room into four conference rooms. Um, so it's mm. it's incredible. It's really cool. And then the doors that face the deck from those rooms can completely fade away and open up into our incredible view, um, which we can't get now because it's dark. Right. We're going to get some exterior shots. Cole's yeah, we'll, get back. Some, we'll get some aerials. Yeah. Bring the yeah. drone. and Yeah, yeah, yeah. we've been missing uh, at Alexana, unfortunately, uh, some private spaces. Mm -hmm. And uh, we opened it in 2011, and we kind of outgrew the space a couple of yeah. years ago. So uh, it took some time to convince our owner to spend some more money <laughs> and give us more space. But it's going to be fantastic. Yeah, it's it seems like just yesterday this place opened. Going yeah, down. it hasn't oh, been that long. That? And, now, and now this. I mean, and, and the, the flexibility of yep. the space is like... Yep. You nailed it. I think that's super cool. Like, that, that's definitely the way to go. Yeah, it was pre-COVID ideas that uh, have really turned out to be <laughs> very uh, smart. Yeah. Yeah. When's when's the official opening? You would... N yes? No? Uh, last May. <laughs> <laughs> last May. Got it. Okay, so that was the official opening. <laughs> but... What are you guys... You just sitting around on your hands or what? <laughs> uh, you know, I hate to... No excuses this year. You don't want to jinx it. Okay. I hate to quote, but... Um, the inside might be ready in about four weeks, so maybe oh, wow. okay. early February. Uh, but of course, then it's up to the governor to decide when we can start tasting inside. Right. Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah, yeah. But for now, people can come taste that on the deck. Oh yeah, it's covered heaters. Yeah, yeah. it's gorgeous. Lots we were all like blown away walking into this place. We've yeah. all we've all been here before, and this is a. It was already nice, but it's an improvement for sure. When well, as someone who's hosting outdoors right now, looking at this space, I have the most envy of probably any other tasting room in the Valley right now to be set up for who knows how long social distancing and outside. Yes. Mm -hmm. is, this is a really, really the, unique spot. The covering, Gorgeous. the massive covering is just so yeah. nice for rainy days. Yeah, it was fortuitous. Our owner got a little concerned that he was spending all this money uh, during COVID, but uh, the president of our company, John Gablehausen, was like, no, this is what, this is exactly what we need. Yep. Right. To keep people uh, separated and apart and, and a beautiful, uh, beautiful place to taste wine. Amen. Okay. All right. Uh, so, Charles, one of the reasons we wanted badly to have you on is because your reputation as a hospitality professional in the area. So, a little, little background. Little background. My understanding is you grew up in Texas, 
cut your teeth there with uh, wine education, yep. working in restaurants, and then you made your way here to the Walnut Valley in 2008, spent some time at Dobbs before uh, a couple other spots, and then here at Alexana 2015 was when you started. Yes. All correct, right? Okay. Yeah. So what made you want to come here? You were sitting, you were in Texas and at hopefully a good job, I don't know, but something <laughs> said, go west, young man. Yeah, it's a great question. I, um, long story short, I wanted to be a winemaker. I got into the restaurant business um, 30 years ago. And if you can believe it or not, Texas Tech at that time had a um, uh, degree in winemaking. Once I found out how much chemistry was involved, I knew that was not for me because I hated chemistry. Same. And then friends in the restaurant business said, well, become a SOM, study that. Mm -hmm. So I started uh, getting some sommelier certifications and worked in fine dining restaurants. Um, I had an incredible Italian uh, mentor uh, that really taught me how to be uh, a great host and a great uh, uh, SOM and a great maitre d'. And I did that for many years, and then I was tired of the hours, so I tried to make it worse. I tried to open a restaurant. Oh. And fortunately, <laughs> I couldn't raise the money. Um, long story. And did you say fortunately? Uh, fortunately, yes. <laughs> you got out. Got I would it. either be chained to a restaurant in Houston, Texas, or bankrupt, and neither one of those sounds... Was it a steakhouse? ...like much fun. No, 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 no. Oh, God. No. Well, uh, isn't that what the only thing that makes it? There's a lot of steakhouses okay. in Texas. <laughs> no. And Don't so my friend said, well, why don't you go work at a winery? And I was, they, they said, do what other sommeliers do. Go work at a winery. And I hadn't really thought about that. Um, we had been to the Willamette Valley for a vacation in 2007. Uh, we had stayed at the Archery Summit Guest House um, because I was in industry. And I fell in love with the valley even in March when it was mm. cold and wet. And so we just took the leap and moved here. Um, and I went to work for Dobbs and managed their tasting room. And the rest is history. Yeah. Mm. You got your roots, As they say. roots planted. So you mentioned uh, an Italian boss. Yep. Would you say pretty influential, good boss? Oh, my God. Kind of pointed in the right direction? He really, um, his name is Efizio Ferris, and he's from Sardinia, Italy. Uh, I went to work for him. Um, I can't remember what year, and I worked for him for eight years, mm. and he really um, taught me the art of hospitality, mm. the art of being a maitre d'. Um, we had a, an incredible following in Dallas and Houston, and I really have to thank him for uh, his contribution to my career. He, mm. he taught me a lot about how to take care of people, how to make people feel good, how to be put people in the right place, mm. and um, yeah, I owe a lot to him. Mm. Was it on the job, like, in the moment training? Absolutely. Oh, okay, so he didn't have, like, a training program. No. Yeah, so it was no on the job. Hey, I saw you did this. This was in the dining room. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. No, he, uh, he was incredible, and uh, <laughs> he was hard. I mean, he was tough. Uh, but it, it gave me an incredible hospitality background. Mm. Mm. Hard bosses or tough bosses can do a lot for us, <clears throat> even though in the moment that might not be so fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And anybody else as far as mentors, people that you look at and you go, they're, they're doing it right. They, I want to I do that or I want to be like them or anything. Maybe not now, or, but previously. Or? Uh, he taught me most of my hospitality background. I had other mentors as a young, I, I got exposed to luxury uh, retail at a very young age. Mm. And that was not the um, class that I came from. Mm. Um, but I got introduced to luxury at a very young age, luxury retail. I worked for a jeweler, we had a furrier. Mm. Um, mm. So I think that all worked uh, towards the wine business. Um, but it also humbled me um, to know that I only know as much as I know and people, you, you have to share as much as you can share. I was, I was a waiter and a bartender for years, mm -hmm. and waiters and bartenders become incredible mind readers. Mm -hmm. And they can look at a client within 60 seconds yeah. and figure out what they want, what <laughs> they know, what they want to hear, <laughs> and that's what hospitality is about. Mm -hmm. yep. 
You and, yeah. you figure out within 60 seconds to a to two minutes maybe um, how you need to treat that client, mm. and that is I think why all those experiences have made me uh, so successful in this business. Mm. Huh. It's a great way to put it. Mm. <clears throat> so when you think of look back, you've, you said you really enjoy traveling. What are some of those just dynamite hospitality experiences that you've had, whether it's a restaurant or hotel or winery? What are some of the ones that stick out? Like, my God, these people are killing it. I, I tell you what, um, if you've ever stayed at a Four Seasons or a, a Ritz-Carlton, mm. those people, they know how to hire. Mm. You have to hire the right individual. Amen. Um, yeah. And then they know how to train. And one of my first experiences was at a Four Seasons in Scottsdale, Arizona. And this was 25 years ago. And we pulled up and we, uh, the, the valet came out and we gave them our names. And for the next four days, everybody in the building knew our names. No kidding. And we walked into the lobby. Everybody behind the desk was like so happy and they were so welcoming. And I tell you, when I first came to this valley in 2008 and was working at the Dobbs Tasting Room, sometimes I scared people because I was so <laughs> welcoming. Right. I was like, hey, come in. And they were like, oh, my God. <laughs> they yeah. were like, why is this guy so happy to be here? Why is, is he, he welcoming us? And that got ingrained <laughs> in me. I remember that week. coming here. Huh? Yeah. That yeah. Got, got ingrained in me a long time ago. What did they want from me? If you... If you don't have a passion for wine, if you don't have a passion for service, then you can work at a winery, but don't mm. work in the tasting room. Work in accounting. Yeah. Work in admin. Absolutely. Work in marketing. Um, don't work in the tasting room unless you love seeing people, talking to people, and, and expressing your passion for this, this incredible product. Yeah, no, I couldn't mm. agree more. And because some, some of the stuff can be learned obviously you yeah. know, over time or training or whatever but like you said if you don't love it some of it is in your genes yeah. <laughs> it's in your dna yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah i mean in black tie all of my employees that have worked out have found me primarily because they're like that sounds like fun yep i haven't the one time i put an ad out was a disaster like it just yeah. was a, <laughs> you know people word of mouth Hey, this is this, this, this. You should try this. This would be fun. Yeah, and and then it it, ma it makes right. sense. But yeah, you got you got to have a certain innate ability. I 100% right. agree. I agree. Well, and I've always told my team whether it's with the tour company or at uh, the winery, I don't care if you don't know the first thing about wine. If you come and you're into it, you have a great attitude. You're willing to be a team player, uh, and you're going to take your ego out of the picture. I can teach you everything you need to know. Yep. Um, and it's so fun watching young kids, mm -hmm. 23, 24, which is what we were starting mm -hmm. at the Allison. Yeah. My God, you're you know. so old. Yeah. I'm an old man. Oh, uh, ago, you know, but watching, I didn't know the first, I had never eaten at a nice restaurant. I had never stayed at a nice hotel. Um, but we walked into this team that had really great leadership. Oh, yeah. And we learned how to work as a team. Yep. Um, and it was those things that, that stuck, like name recognition. Yep. Mr. Smith, yeah. it's good to see you again. Oh my God! How have you been since May when we saw you last? Yep. You know those kind of little things, um, and so it is fun. We get a lot of young folks, and I know you get them with your drivers, inexperienced. But yep. as long as they have that, go get it. <laughs> You're 25, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. You're not going to cost me too much on my insurance. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, so you, early on, you knew you wanted to be involved in wine. Yes. Pretty pretty early on. So, and you mentioned off camera how you read a lot, particularly wine and history, and it's, it's a huge part of your life. What, what's one maybe specific thing about wine that really gets your juices flowing, floats your boat, gets you excited? Uh, early on, I realized that wine was um, chemistry, which I failed. <laughs> so I knew I couldn't be a winemaker. Uh, but wine was history, which I loved. It was my favorite topic mm -hmm. in school. Uh, wine is agriculture, and I spent uh, many, many summers growing up on my great-grandparents' farm, and I loved getting dirty and getting into the dirt. Um, and then I learned wine was such an art, um, and there was so many facets, and I couldn't find, I was in the restaurant business, and I couldn't find anything else that had 
that many interesting layers. Um, and that just got me really intrigued. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's artistry, chemistry, uh, winemakers are chefs. Um, it just, it fulfilled all of my interests. Yeah, mm, absolutely. So this is, I get some free mentorship because you're on the podcast, so I get to ask questions. Yeah. Now for me, I host in a little bit more casual manner, especially during the greeting process. But I always lead with, we can make this as nerdy and educational as you'd like, or as casual, and there's no such thing as a dumb question. If it's your first time tasting, ask all of your questions. Yep. Do you have sort of a go-to introduction to give people the space to feel comfortable? Our, our training at Alexana, the, the first thing we tell uh, associates is do a quick interview. Do a 60 second interview. How did you get here? Mm. Who told you about us? Is it your first time at the Valley? Mm. What do you prefer? What is your palate? Uh, have you had Willamette wines? Is it new to you? Um, are you more familiar with California Pinot Noir? You know, do a 60 to two minute interview so that you can talk to those people in a friendly, yep. hospitable way and make them feel comfortable. People walk into a winery and sometimes, you know, their shoulders are kind of high and they're kind of intimidated mm -hmm. and they're not comfortable. And you don't want people uncomfortable right. when you're trying to sell a product. So um, first of all, a fantastic greeting. Again, I've scared people when they come in <laughs> saying, hey, come in. Nice to see you. Uh, but make them feel comfortable and do a very quick interview and figure out where they are mm. so that you can talk to them in a friendly way. Mm. Excellent. Yeah, and a lot of people enjoy talking about themselves. I mean, not everybody, but it's it's in conversation. It's like the one subject you're an expert on, right? Absolutely. No matter what. So yeah. <laughs> kind of Absolutely. Gets kind if of they say we're here... Um, you know, we found you through the Chamber of Commerce and we're here because we checked in our, our daughter at Linfield and she's going to play soccer. Well, you know what? I can talk about soccer for a there few minutes yep. mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they calm down yeah, right? and they don't feel intimidated ground. anymore. Right. They feel welcome. They're talking about a subject that they're comfortable with. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Finding and common ground with them. Exactly. Yeah. You talk about soccer for a little bit. And then you take it back to wine, right? Yeah. You make them the hero of their own story. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, there you go. All right. Before we move on, what is that one restaurant, that one experience, trip, whatever, that you're looking forward to when all this COVID shit is <laughs> done <laughs> What is it you're just thirsting for? Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> having been in the restaurant, it's kind of weird. Having been in the restaurant business for 25 to 30 years, you would think I, I don't want to go back to a restaurant, but <laughs> I miss eating out. Oh, yeah. me too. Mm. And I, having been in that business for so long, uh, my heart pains every day for those people in that industry mm. that can't work, that are losing their income. Yep. Um, I, I, I don't want to get political, but um, I think that was a horrible um, decision to close restaurants. Tasting rooms... We'll be okay. Um, restaurants, I'm so worried about. And mm -hmm. I'm so worried about all those waiters and cooks and busboys and yep. hostesses. And it's so many jobs. Yep. One in five unemployed right now it's are from so the restaurant many jobs, industry. And I really miss it. Um, I'm really tired of my recipes at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and exactly. I, I don't care where, but I cannot wait to go out to a restaurant and enjoy an evening and support a waiter and a chef and a cook and an owner. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm missing. Mm. Into that. Good answer. Mm. All right, well, we've got to take a little break. Uh, we'll be back in just a few moments. Welcome back to Haas Brutality. We are back to doing a top five. We are going to discuss our top five wineries for service and hospitality, yeah. especially. Um, <laughs> this list is going to contain some some familiar names because right. obviously we care about hospitality and so that's you know part of why we, we've discussed them so um I let's assume see. it starts with alexana that's why we're here that's part of, that's why we're that's here why. Sort of you why know. i chose you to talk about the subject <laughs> absolutely well <laughs> yeah. you, thank you we gave you the props was that the first episode 
I've with name dropped We've named Charles, Charles a, a fanboy like yeah. on seven or eight episodes. So yeah. this yeah. is a So I think we've done our due okay. diligence there. Yeah. Alexana. I can, I can honestly say obviously. my first my first on my list was Alexana, but I yep. assumed all of us would say that. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm not exaggerating, Charles. No. We we uh we truly feel like both Wes and I especially, because we've worked in tasting rooms and we have both come through here before we yep. were working in tasting rooms, had um, the same feeling of like you were sort of the pinnacle of the, uh, somebody who who really took this job, you know, to the next level. Um, as yes. you know, there's a lot yeah. of people that aren't as professional in this industry. Yeah. So anyways, well, when, so yes. on the yeah, list. When, it's the top when, of the list. When really. I started driving for Stefan, I asked him, who, sh- who should I pay attention to? He said, watch everything Charles does. Oh, wow. Emulate that. Thank you. You'll yeah. be all right. So we're just wow. giving you an ego boost here, Charles. Yeah. That's the only reason we came. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we're all big fans. Thank you. Um, so, so top five wineries for hospitality for me. I like small, intimate tastings. Um, the Lancelotti is a sleeper for me, um, especially if Paul the Lancelotti is hosting your tasting. Oh yeah, <clears throat> which is most Paul's, of the time. Paul's just yeah. such yeah, exactly. Paul's just so he's cool. Uh, he makes it really laid back, but he's he's really knowledgeable and. Um, he, he meets you at your level, you know, like Charles was saying, mm-hmm. he really does a good job, uh, making people fo- feel comfortable. Winderly, of course, they're sort of one of the other standards of this Valley. Um, I like the way they just do everything by appointment. They're so prepared for every group. Uh, they, they nail it out the park every time I've been there. But it also feels kind of family, you know, with like Bill and Donna yeah, sort of rolling not, through with the right, dogs. Right. right. Like you get that kind of polished. It's not sterile. It, but then they kind of... Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. It's a good point. It's just very professional, but it's super comfortable. It's a great balance. Very welcoming. Yeah. yeah. Um, my glasses are fogging up. Dupont. <laughs> so Dupont gets kind of forgotten about, I think, in some ways, because mm-hmm. it's up there with those big uh, Domain Serenes and Domain Druins. But I think Dupont is one of the best hospitality experiences. We share a lot of clients with yeah. Dupont. Yeah. Dude, who's the Who's the host? Aaron. Aaron. I love Aaron. He Aaron. is. Phenomenal. Dynamo. Aaron's one of the best hosts, along with Charles. Been honestly, there forever. yes, yeah. Yeah. same thing. Experience trains their people right. Um, Responds to emails quickly. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, just there's just something about like I've driven for Stefan many times, and bringing a group to Dupont for me, it's very similar to bringing people here. You just you aren't worried about what what they're going to experience. You know they're going to get taken care of. Yep. And um, nobody just, comes out of Dupont and was and is like that was kind of weird. Right. Right. And the, the there view. are places where it's like that. I yeah. love the view from DuPont. Yeah. Too. The only thing a, that's weird at DuPont note. is when you're driving a 15 passenger van and they're sitting in the car waiting for you to like make your 30 point turn to get headed the right direction. It's yeah. a little tight up there. It's a little bold. <laughs> it's a little tight. <laughs> but my favorite. I, I've sweated so many times trying to. But going down <laughs> that right little up. drive is one of my favorite spots to be during fall. Yeah. That, that like oh, yeah. bowl of yep. vineyards right there. Yep. Or the vineyard it's gorgeous. bowl. Gorgeous. Yep. Um, Soder, of course, we've talked about Soder many times in this pod. Um, but you have to bring them into the list. We're talking about best hospitality experiences in the Valley food program. They greet you, you know, at your car basically with Rose. Um, and it's just, I just love the space. I love the way that they, the vibe that they have going up there. And then another favorite of ours is Hazel Fern. We've obviously spent time with, um, Brian and Laura, but they're, they also kind of like Winderly. It's a very professional experience. Um, mm-hmm. It's very dialed. They're doing. They know exactly what they're doing, and it can be as nerdy or as as comfortable and fun as you want. But I think they meet in the middle really, really well between comfy, you know, uh, sort of a really nice, hospitable place, while also keeping it really professional and right. feeling like you're at a a it's, place you want to buy a bunch of wine. It's at. great when you have people who speak professional. You know, like they've been in the business world. They know. Right the dance, they know what's kind of expected, but yet really they're down to earth. Right. And so, you know, they can relate to people right. on different levels. It's wonderful. Well, and they're different. one of the folks too, as a tour driver, I try to give as much information to the winery that I'm going to take my appointments to. And if you give them pretty accurate information, they've like from the get go, they're on that level, yeah. which I always appreciate. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, for me, Bethel Heights, their private tasting, um, Pre-COVID with their charcuterie program, that little side room, gorgeous wines. Um, that was family. That was one of the mm-hmm. places that really, it, it changed my perspective on Chardonnay when I was new to the industry. And ever since, that experience has imprinted on my mind. Uh, Antigua Terra, I think Maggie has trained her staff exceptionally well. Um, every one of 
the, the folks that host you tells the story like they're in love with the program. And I know as a yeah. host, there's days I don't want to host, you know, that's part of the job. But every single time I've taken folks to Antigua Terra, it's an absolute yeah, people, romance. People story. come out and they're like, was that the wine? Was that the one winemaker or right. one of the owners or right. like, like, no, they just, they're just passionate. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, Bergstrom's Echelon Tasting. Vanessa has done such an incredible job building that program, uh, their food program. <clears throat> They're really great neighbors for us. Um, so I've enjoyed that. Cremoisie, again, Sophia <laughs> hits it out of the ballpark every single time. And again, keep coming back to someone who can sit with a CEO executive and mm-hmm. speak that very technical terminology or someone's first time tasting in the Valley mm-hmm. and just make them feel welcome. Um, and evening land, particularly their vineyard tasting experience. And now they're moving the tasting room out there. I'm really excited yeah. to watch AJ just dive so in. AJ is another one of those hosts and, and Tynan was before Tynan's moved on. He's doing incredible stuff. Tynan's great. Um, but AJ, big props to you, brother. All right. My list. Domain Wa, of course, go see Wesley. If you haven't seen Wesley at Domain Wa, he's not the only great, you know, staff member over there, but they, they do a wonderful job, and you guys give the tour. Yeah. Honestly, that's such a slam dunk for us, like, as a tour provider. Like, it's such a little bonus for, for our guests that want to see that. Yeah. You don't have to go on the tour if you don't want to, but you throw it out there, and people lose their minds. They yeah. just they, they love it. It's a little extra something special. Yeah. It's beautiful. Um, Native Flora, and uh, that, again, somebody, Scott Flora up at Native Flora. I love the wines, of course. But Scott's somebody who... Speaks professional. He always finds something to relate to, you know, with the guests. Some, some place they've lived. Oh, you're from uh, Houston, or you're from Minnesota, or whatever. Oh yeah, I spent time at, you know, this business there. Or I have an aunt there. Or I have a friend who lives in, you know. He always has some connection. Which He's usually I, lived in the place that you. It been. blows me away. <laughs> like, yeah. So, I lived there for six months when I was right. in college. Like it's every time. I will give it a, uh, a little sidebar scott's not for everyone he has he's a big personality <laughs> oozes with confidence every once in a while we get somebody on our end that that rubs them the wrong way but but it's you know but most people but in my experience he, scott doesn't he, give a damn no no which is why he, scott, no. scott yeah no it's a, we love but, scott. and denise, he's an denise oh, is yeah. 10 times better than scott so yeah. <laughs> right that? and better looking so what are, yeah <laughs> Just and hope, right over there. hope Denise is doing your tasting if you go up to Florida, but Scott will do a pretty good job. <laughs> there you go. No, I'm just uh, let's see. Uh, Jay Christopher. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, they're so friendly over there, and I, I think it's just a wonderful place, especially for beginners, because they are really excellent, excellent at gauging where you're at, and it doesn't seem like they're bored at all about kind of going through the same stuff. I know they're going through all the same stuff, but they just have such energy. Mm-hmm. What a great job over there. Um, Grand Moraine, I've found that people really enjoy tastings there. They have a nice culture. I, just, yeah. I don't know what's um, what's their secret because I think that's the best of the three Jackson family properties mm-hmm. for hospitality. Um, just great energy. And then uh, Jay at EIEIO. Again, Jay is one of those professionals. He's been around a long time. He... Um, knows how to spin a great yarn, and you know the he's just on stage and 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 puts on a great show and and so, cheers to you, Jay. Well done. So, Charles, anything to add or? I would I no. You guys did a great job. I would uh, I would throw in Domain Divio. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. uh, yep. Bruno, the winemaker. Fantastic. Especially Bruno. Yes. Uh, host if he's there he's not yep. there during the week um and um there's a great tasting room if you're looking for big reds from washington there's a great tasting room called tortulia uh in the dundee inn i think it's called now hotel the, the, dundee. the dundee i think hotel yeah. dundee uh several tasting rooms and uh, there's a great tasting room we call it called tortulia which has fantastic hospitality and you but know you one can, of you know one of the, the service people there very well right uh, a little bit, yeah. Very. <laughs> a Frenchman, don't hold it against him. Yeah. Uh, a Frenchman named Exalier. I think we're, oh. we're going to need to do an episode where we just go to downtown tasting rooms. Like, uh, 
I'm game. We've talked about him, but we should we should go through and film. Yeah, we'll do a some there's some gems. uh, Tasting room crawl. Yeah, yeah, yes. (laughs) Just get shitty. Absolutely. That would be kind of fun. All right. Um, Is that our? Oh, wine Westco wine update. So, um, we're gonna try and be a little more consistent about this, letting you know what's going on in our wine um, creation process, our brand, etc. Not a lot, but uh, there has been some. <laughs> it's a slow time of year. So our uh, New Year's resolutions, one of them was to you know do paperwork, do the things yeah. that we don't like to do. So I dug in and I got a bunch of the paperwork filled out for opening the bank account. But God, I hate I hate sifting through all this bullshit. I I, I have to get <laughs> Megan in the room. Like Megan, what does this mean? What are they asking? Like she just, she just can. So some of these things. I still I need the operating operating agreement, customer info sheets, certification of beneficial owners, due diligence paper, meeting minutes that includes what we want for the account. I mean, God, online bank. There's there's a lot of shit. But you would think the bank would I'm, just want to take our money. I, I know that's what I, I thought really, too. Uh... I thought I'd be able to walk in there with like my EIN. Right. You know, and be like, we want to open it. No. Yeah. Here's our three signatures. Boom, boom. All this shit. Right. So anyway, we're really close. I think there's like one more thing we need to do and we will be able to have our. Bank. By we, Stefan means he. He's <laughs> basically. <laughs> Steph- we'll Wes and I are over here working. Minutes with him. working yeah. our, you're putting in the time. Working our hours. But Stefan's doing so. a lot of the stuff he's talking about us doing. So just to be clear, you guys Stefan are and Megan. Are mostly doing West Coast paperwork, yep. so it should maybe. Well, and be Cole's in. working on the brainchild for the art for a label right now. Yeah, that's right. Um, that's right. Yes. So it's all coming together. Then it's just yeah. the OLCC and the TTB, and and then try to sell all our wine. Juice so. in cans it's pretty simple from here. I, I, we're, yeah. yeah, we're gonna have it in cans, hell or high water, whether we're we stoked. can legally sell it or not. It's yeah. gonna be in cans. <laughs> we just don't know. And whether uh, I come up with a label or not, we're gonna have a can out. Okay, there, next so. week. Wow. You're gonna have some drafts, a right? Of, right. A proof of we'll concept. be. We'll have some ideas. We, we'll anyway. have some ideas that we can let our viewers yeah. vote on. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, the listeners, you, you'll need to go to the the website or well, the by, Facebook page yeah. or something, Instagram. By viewers, I mean listeners, subscribers. Whatever. How our subscribers can vote on a, our our massive fan base. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right. We'll be back in just a moment with our last segment. Welcome back to Haas Brutality. We are going to introduce to you today a new segment called our Sports Minute. We dedicate, we, <laughs> we want to talk more about sports, so here, here it goes. Yeah. <laughs> give us your feedback if you want. We're going to give you just some garbage. Cole. We, we love sports. Um, well, Justin Herbert, who all of a sudden there's so many Charger fans in Oregon because <laughs> the... Elite quarterback from Oregon got tr- uh, drafted by the San Diego or the San Diego, the Los Angeles Chargers. Oh, so my favorite team in the world and always has been the Chargers. I was born in San Diego, and Justin Herbert is a bad mamma jamma, and he just won the Rookie of the Year. Knows how to toss that rock. So, to all you Oregon slash Chargers fans, um, that was awesome. He really, he's an amazing quarterback, and yeah, it's exciting. Something to be excited out for Duck. For Duck fans and Charger yeah. fans. It'd be cool if their coach put him in a better position to win games. Didn't he get fired? Didn't Did he? Did I he? think the coach got fired, he didn't he? I don't know. I mean, he was he's awful. one of the most talented teams in the country every year, and he can't really seem to win a ball game. So, <laughs> that's, uh, uh, yeah. When you oh, have yeah, the best can... quarterback in the country, and then you're, you know, like, lose like four games. Well, well my team tanked purposely oh, God, to, get, to go three more, <laughs> to get move up three spots in the draft, which I won. That was the worst showing in Peterson. sports that I've seen in years. I loved it. So we're talking about the Philadelphia Eagles benching their starting quarterback yeah. like in the third quarter of a two-score or one-score game. They're down yeah. by three points. Yeah. One-score game. Love it. Yeah. Respect respect to Doug Peterson. People losing their minds. Hopefully Doug the Peterson. tweets from the Giants. The Giants fans yeah. were so mad. Giants and the players. Because they, the, yeah. they needed the Eagles to win. They needed the Eagles the to win, and they're in the playoffs, and they're just beside themselves. Yeah, hopefully Peterson never gets another But you know Peterson job. did that both to screw the Giants and to get a better draft. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Like well, and here's the thing. The the, here's the other thing. The guy they put in, when he's been in in games, he's been good. Jalen. No, no, no. Oh, oh. no. Sudfeld. 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 And Philly fans love him. He shat the bed, though. He was horrible. He was horrible. He knew he that looked they, like Wentz. He knew the tank was yeah, in. He did look like Wentz. Yeah, I think he might have You could read Jalen's lips on the sideline. I side think line. the owner must have been like, hey, you're going to get a little something under the table. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Toss a few you know, ducks. That was, that was pretty funny. Sorry. Okay. 
Um, what's our number two? Oh, Sixers. So obviously um, from the Philadelphia area, outside of Philadelphia anyway, and uh, big Sixers fan. But I've only really been on like message boards for Sixers within the last couple years on Facebook. And it is just, it's, it's wild. I'm sure it's probably this way for every team. But, you know, people pr- proposing trades, like, oh, we need to get rid of Ben Simmons. We need to get Harden. We need to do this. We need to do that. Everybody's just an expert on, on their sport and their team and everything. And, and I'm watching this, and I'm, I chime in a little bit here and there. But we're watching the season go on, and it's like, okay, win two games, lose one, win another game, win another game, win another game. We're 7-1 and one with the best record in basketball – and there are people still saying we need to do this trade, we need to do that trade, we need to get rid of Ben Simmons, of we need to get all. And it's it because you're playing. You're playing in the Eastern Conference. I Miami I get Heat that. are the only good team in the Eastern Conference. I I get that, but they. Well, hang on a second now. The Bucks. <laughs> I said Bucks pretty good. Seven and one. Uh, it's not bad. Uh, not bad. It just blows me away. Like the. I don't know if it's cognitive dissonance or or what of of these fans that think they're fucking experts. Armchair experts, dude. Like my That's god. Twenty twenty. I mean, yeah. Ben Simmons may not be anyway. That's how the internet broke for sports fans. We're we're winning games. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like we're we're yeah. not treating anybody <laughs> right now. Right. God, shut up. Uh, anyway, so that's my mini rant on Sixers. We'll fans. revisit this at the All Star break and see yeah. if we're still feeling the same hey, way. Hey, you know what? Fine, but. I'm just happy to win when a few they games. trade for Harden and then lose. Oh, the my round. God. Please, no. Jesus. Look, if we're going to talk about the Blazers, we can at least talk about... The Sixers? We can talk about the Blazers? The, the, fact, that the, the fact that the Blazers support our local wine industry. That's it's right. Great great guys. Seem like, you know... You've met a, a couple really, of them. Really healthy few. culture. And uh, we've got a couple of wine labels out of the deal. Yeah. You know? Uh, Chosen Family, Tanning Fry, used yeah. to be a Blazer. We've got... Um, CJ. CJ at... I can't remember Adelson? the name of CJ's. Yeah, he's with Autosign. Is he? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Making his label. Um, I mean, Mellow's in the area. We're waiting on on Mellow to pop up and have a wine label. LeBron, LeBron's cool. one of our, favorite, our biggest listeners, so he's probably, Obviously. Lo- he's probably <laughs> loving this right now. You know he loves he, – he's mentioned he likes Oregon Pinot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they drink it all the time. Yeah. I was talking to a couple of buddies who are in other tasting rooms, and they were sending case – and honestly, if I would have had the forethought, I would have done it, but sent cases ahead of time to the bubble. Uh, during last year's playoffs like, because hey all these guys couldn't leave. They weren't going to restaurants. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it was just incredible advertising. And in return, the guys turned around and bought. It was probably the Sixers Tons getting hammered, wine. and that's why they sucked so bad when they were in the <laughs> bubble last year. So thanks yeah. a lot, uh, Oregon yeah. winemakers. So. Yeah. All right, and that is our <laughs> sports sports minute. Um, okay. A segment that people should be familiar with. What's been brutal and what's been beautiful yeah um something <laughs> brutal or just <laughs> fucking stupid that i came across on um i think facebook advertised it because they thought hey this guy talks about wine and whatever the the bubbly blaster basically an attachment to a bottle of bubbles that you can just shoot <laughs> wine at, into people's <laughs> mouths i saw this advertisement and they're like at like a pool bar charles is giving me a very dis- disapproving look as he should because this is the brutal segment people people like lined up at a bar and the bartender is going Tsh, oh my Tsh, god Tsh, to people this is out of an like actual um episode of it's always sunny, sunny in Philadelphia. yeah i it's, it's a real thing that's ridiculous. And didn't you look it up, Wes? It was kind yeah. of expensive, no, it's, too, right? I mean, they've got entry level that are like 100 bucks, and then you can get your gold plated for five, Jesus. 600 bucks. Well, the, wow. You know, I'm going to go yeah. for that. I'm going to go for that model. You hey, know, whatever I'm, moves I'm, wine. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> for the bachelorette okay. parties you know, in you your make life. A point. I was going to say, like, a winemaker who spends years sometimes making whatever these bubbles. <laughs> but yeah, I guess oh, if he wants to sell it and squirt it into someone's yeah, mouth, then for sure, brother. So. More power to you. Yeah, pour oh. it down the naked body of some. Anyway, we'll just you stop. You have a wild there. imagination. <laughs> hey, wow. as long as well, you know, I've seen a few '80s like action flicks. So that's that's all. That's the way they drink their. Fair. I wasn't born oh, yeah. until anyway. the '90s, so Stefan's right. aging himself here. Well, anyway, uh, also on. brutal. The cost of insurance for companies. Touring oh, companies. I'm yes. reinstating my tour company insurance right now. 
and it is brutal. After this year, they still want thousands and thousands of dollars up front to start your insurance policy. Yep. Um, it's not necessarily an easy time to fork over, you know, three, four grand to get that going again. Yeah, in a way, it's uh, it makes people think long and hard about if they want to do this, but it right. means nobody can do it part time. You right. really have to be pretty committed to it right. or uh, or have a pretty damn good plan. Um, so that barrier of entry is well, and the state yeah. of Oregon needs to be more business friendly. Oh, yep. okay. Yep. We're doing a whole other episode about yep. not Oregon specifically, Newburgh, but like even I'm happy to have a longer conversation about Oregon in general. Or we're going to end up like California. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right, leave. Charles. Yep, yep. Everyone's leaving because of that, and I think people are getting just as, just as frustrated yeah. in Oregon. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, one more brutal rant. Jam, J A M, butter chardonnay. I was walking through Fred Meyer. And uh, a little rack was in the aisle of Chardonnay, and it just said butter Chardonnay. And we all know that Chardonnays have the quote unquote buttery taste. But if people lost their goddamn minds oh, just to write it. butter did you, did right you, on the bottle? Did you buy a bottle for research? And no. I, Stefan, this is not new. So I, I just first knew to been me. Around. This, this wine has been around? Yes. I believe butter. Well, has, God but damn it! I mean, crap sells to the masses. <sighs> Cougar juice is an actual name of a wine. Yes, Cougar absolutely. juice. Th there's an actual name. Cougar this juice, is which is wine. a buttery Chardonnay. Jesus yeah. Christ! And butter is. I mean, there's somebody in our family that drinks butter, and well, she's related to me. I drink real butter, but I know who you're talking about. Exactly. Which I, to each their own. But I, I um, pick a wine that is buttery and drink it. But Picking something right off the shelf that just says butter on it is such so lowest common denominator. Anyway, I was furious, ranting in the middle of the Fred Meyer wine section <laughs> to Megan, who honestly, to her credit, was just like, I get it. I thought she was going to tell me to shut up, but she was like, no, that's that's pretty stupid. I would have told you to shut up. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Straight fair to the point, Charles. But yeah, I was, it was, I was appalled. All right. So, beautiful. Uh... I, it's it was tough. The whole food truck pod in Newburgh got vandalized, broken into. Um, mm -hmm. They hit every one of the trucks. The Caribbean food truck, from my conversations with the food truck pod, got hit the hardest. Mm -hmm. um, wow! And right now, as we know, it's there is no wiggle room. Um, but the beautiful part is that our little community, for all of its flaws and things I get frustrated about, showed up. And so they started GoFundMes for all the trucks. Um, the Caribbean food truck had a $10,000 GoFundMe, and they passed that in about three days. Um, and every, <clears throat> all the other trucks' GoFundMes that I saw also hit um, their need. Go uh, Newberg. Because the insurance companies were denying their claims because they didn't have a vandalism clause in, their, in their insurance policy. Um, so, yeah. So the Caribbean food truck is up and going. We ate there about... Two days ago, damn, awesome. mm, the tasty. wings are so good. The brisket, the brisket's incredible. Oh. Uh, so go check out the food truck pod. Uh, they're great neighbors and, and really they're sweethearts. Really fabulous, so people. fun to talk yep. to. And you get you get unique food that yeah. literally is multiple generations recipes. Um, so huge fan there. New Burgundian on their brunch menu for the weekend. They have chicken and waffles, mm. which I've been looking for for so long. Mm. So. It's and they have outdoor seating. Phenomenal. Outdoor seating. So we can yep. go, you can actually yep. go and eat there. Go and so enjoy you like chicken and waffles, New Burgundian and New, New Burgundian Bur on the weekends. Obviously. It's great food. All their food is good, but... Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yep. Solid stuff. Yep. Chicken and waffles. Nothing wrong. And uh, a thank you to all of our industry folks who yep. sent us a New Year's resolution. Oh, uh, man. Vanessa from Bergstrom did it. Uh, Evan Bellinger. Allison Suckleblosser. Peter Shea, Jillian, um, at Ben Sanderlin, Jillian. There were there was a whole list of you guys. Thank you very much for contributing. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, that was a lot of fun. That was that was my favorite part of that episode. Yeah, so absolutely. Just hearing people Again, thoughts. just a reminder of all the beautiful faces that we get to see yeah. as tour operators all the time. Yeah. But most folks don't if they're not coming to your winery all the time don't see these beautiful people. Yeah. And there's there's a lot of really beautiful people uh, in our industry, so we're grateful for you. Sweethearts uh, that work hard, represent Oregon, represent the Willamette Valley wonderfully so uh thank you so yeah all right well thank you for tuning in for hospitality if you enjoyed this please like follow subscribe share 
Write all us the love letters, etc. And we will see you next week. <laughs> love you guys. Well, Charles, thanks for being with us. Um, again, as part of what we're doing with the education side, folks that are new to the Valley, uh, new to wine, or maybe new to hospitality. Uh, for me, it's really important that we lower that barrier of entry and just provide a little space for folks to begin their deep dive into wine. Absolutely. So for today, if you have three or four um, little tidbits, things folks can look for, uh, learn from, or even expand their, their Google search. Uh, but as far as becoming a host, what are some of the core values or uh, things they should look to accomplish? Oh, wow. That's tough. Um, Wes, <clears throat> you have to have an innate sense of wanting to share a passion and a story with people. Um, there are some great links. Um, uh, OPB has a great uh, story about the beginnings of the Willamette mm -hmm. Valley, mm -hmm. which I send to all my uh, new hires. Uh, there's a great link in uh, National Geographic about the Willamette, uh, about the uh, Missoula floods. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's just interesting you ask that. I think we probably need a, a school or a class or uh, a type of study to get people mm. in, uh, inundated into the uh, Willamette story. And I'm thinking about starting that business myself. Oh, please do. I like it. I think we need it. I would support it. Sorry, I don't know what else to say. That's perfect. Charles, thanks for being here. <laughs> I appreciate you, brother. You caught me good. by surprise. No, you're good. We'll, uh, 